Hi, this is Lance Culver, and this is going to be a tie flow tutorial. In this video, I'll be simulating an ammunition belt, but the same technique can be used for any situation where you have multiple objects chained together. I have this M2HB model, which unfortunately is not mine, so I can't upload it. But if you want to follow along, there will be a link in the description for a site that has a few to choose from. But I also have an empty shell casing, an empty link, and then a bullet and link combined into a single object. And I also have this ammo can. And for the purpose of this video, I'll assume that you have some type of collider object, but of course you don't have to. Okay, to go ahead and start setting it up, I'm going to select the bullet and link. And we need to pay attention to the orientation of the pivot. And mine, for instance, has the Y-axis aligned with the travel direction of the bullet. First thing I'm going to do is bring the bullet and link up in the front view and zoom in on it. And come over here to the Hierarchy tab and select Effect Pivot Only. And drag the pivot over to the empty side of the link. Try to get it as close to center as you can. Alright, that'll be all for that. And then next I'll hold shift and drag over here towards the empty side of the link. Create a copy. Line it up in the center as best I can. I'm actually going to make nine copies. And then select the link tool. And starting with the first one here, link each of these together. And then select them all. Hold shift, drag towards the empty side. And then link this old one to the new one. And I'm going to repeat the same process a few more times. I got 120 rounds made. Next I'm going to create a line. Maybe wrap it down here in front of the can some and then make as many loops inside the can here to try to ensure that all of them make it inside while giving them enough room to so they're not overlapping each other. I can adjust this later once the bullets are in position. Can go ahead and move the line over into the can. All right, so I got the bullets laid out like this. I'm going to go ahead and select the very last one. And then come up here to Animation, IK Solvers, Spline IK Solver. And now select the very first one here. And then the Spline. I'm going to go ahead and hide this ammo can. Okay, normally you have to adjust this a little bit, but mine came out perfect. If yours, for instance, have some of the bullets facing backwards, uh, you can easily fix that by going into the IK Point Helper, increasing the start angle to 90, and then copying or creating a new dummy, and then switching the up node to that dummy, and then rotating that dummy up or down until your bullets are facing the correct direction. But if they're twisted in some kind of way like you see here, I assure you the best thing to do would just be to drag all the bullets over into position and then individually rotate the ones that need to be rotated until they're all inside the can and then just let tie flow drop them into position which is exactly what I'm going to do here with the spline. It's just when the spline works it'll save a little bit of time but if your spline has the objects all twisted up you'll spend way more time trying to correct that than you would just in doing it manually. All right but mine happened to work so I'm going to leave it like it is. What I will do is I am going to make a copy of this dummy and then go into the IK point helper and change the up node to this new dummy. And then I can go ahead and select all of those old points. Go ahead and get rid of them. And now if I need to adjust the line, I'll be able to without it snapping back into this position. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Go ahead and select the line. Over here to the modify tab, come down to line. We just don't want it penetrating the sides or the bottom. And I can also I'm just gonna come over to Create Helpers, select the drop down here, come down to Tie Flow, and add a tie actor. We need to put it right in the center of the scene at zero zero zero. Otherwise, Tie Flow is not going to spawn these bullets in this exact position. We come over here to the Modify tab, come down to the Sub Menus Add option, so we can add them all at once. And go find the bullets, select them all. And we can go ahead and add a tie flow by coming to create geometry. And select tie flow, drop it in. And we can go ahead and create some collision geometry for the chamber. Go to create extended primitives, chamfer box. And enable auto grid. Make it about as wide as the gun and long enough where it'll cover the entire chamber.
then line it up here with the bottom of the chamber. All right, then I'll make one for the top. I'm gonna give it enough room to make sure these bullets fit in here. And then one here in the back. And then one for the front. I'm gonna go ahead and hide these. And next go ahead and create a couple boxes. Make them wide enough for a bullet length to fit completely inside. And then line it up with the center of the chamber here. And then make a copy. And I'll rename this Eject Helper. And I'll go ahead and rename that first one. Rename it Bind Helper. Then we'll create one more copy. And we'll rename this one Pull Helper. I'm going to add some animation to this one. I'm going to come over to, let's say, frame 150. Enable Auto Key. And then slide this joker on back some. I can go ahead and select Tie Flow. And then Open Editor. All right, first let's add a birth operator. And then we'll say frame zero, one particle. Change the display to geometry. And we can add an actor and pick the actor object. Go ahead and hide the original scene geometry. Now let's add a physics shape. And we can come down to the very bottom here under start penetrations and select ignore starting penetrations. And then a physics bind. You can go ahead and disable the movement and swing settings. And we need to change the twist axis orientation to particle Y, or at least I do, because that was, if you recall, but that was why I mentioned paying attention to the orientation of the pivot. All right, we can go ahead and reduce the spring value down to let's say 250, and we can reduce the damping down to 100. Now let's come down here under proximity binds. And so now what we're trying to do actually, proximity binds will not work for this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to disable the proximity bind altogether. We can do that by unchecking particles. And so now we have no binds being created. And then come down here and open actor bind. And then let's enable actor hierarchical bindings. So what we're doing is we're telling TIEFLOW to rely on the binds that we set up when we linked all the bullet objects together. And TIEFLOW does a remarkable job with this. And even at a single step per frame, uh, TIEFLOW will do a really good job at simulating this. We can go ahead and set up some collision and we can test it out. Let's add a physics collision. And let's pick this ammo can, if you have one, and change the hole type to mesh. You can also go ahead and add these chamfer boxes. So now to test it out and see, look how good this looks. You see there was a little bit of separation like right here, tiny bit at a distance, you wouldn't even notice it. So just a one step per frame would probably work. But increase the time step and that would solve that problem. All right, so now let's go ahead and add this pull helper into TIEFLOW with a birth objects into a new event. And then add the box. Go ahead and hide the original. And we're gonna use the pull helper to do just that. Pull all these bullets through the chamber. So what we're gonna do is create a bind to this, but in order to create the bind, we need to make it a physics shape. So let's add a physics shape. But we don't actually want any physics being applied, so let's add a physics switch and change it to kinematic and then a object bind and pick the original scene geometry and we also need to place it on some simulation group so add a particle groups place it on group one but we can also now add a particle groups into this first event and place these on group two now we'll need to set that up in tie flow by selecting tie flow, opening up the physics rollout and enabling group one and two and I'll also need to come back into the physics collision and enable Collider Simulation Groups 2. So now let's add a surface test and pick the bind helper and then change the test mode to volume and size. See here, go ahead and select the gun in both of these boxes and press Alt X. All right, now let's create a new event. 
So now you see both of these bullets have made it into this 30 vent. I'm going to do, and it really doesn't matter, but I'm going to drag over this bind helper until it's just the first bullet in there. But again, it, it really doesn't matter. All right, but now we just got the one bullet in there, so I'm going to add a PhysX bind. We could go ahead and enable show bindings, right, and we see that there is no bind being created. Go ahead and disable the movement settings. The rest can stay as it is. And we can come down here and increase the distance quite a bit, let's say 500, and then enable simulation groups 1. And there, now that bind was created, so I'm going to come back up here and disable show bindings. So now let's add a surface test into this event. And this time pick the eject helper and again change the test mode to volume inside and create a new event. I'm going to change this color. All right, now let's scrub through and see whenever it enters this fourth event. All right, that's probably about perfect. What we don't want is the particle entering the eject helper before another particle enters the bind helper. Otherwise, a bind won't be created and all the bullets will just fall out of the chamber. This is probably good, but I might slide this over just a little bit more just to make sure. Okay, it's perfect. I can go in and say select this physics collision and let's reduce this dynamic friction down to about 0.1. Help those bullets slip through there a little bit better and make a copy of this physics collision and drop it into event three. All right, now let's add a spawn operator into event four and then create a new event. Now let's add a shape operator into this new event. Select reference node and pick either the empty link or the empty shell casing. I'll pick the empty link and now a speed operator. We can give it a magnitude of about 13, maybe some kind of variation. Change the direction to particle X and check reverse so it goes this direction. We can add a little bit of noise, maybe 0.11. And a spin operator. Increase the spin rate quite a bit, maybe 1500. And we can also make a copy of this physics collision here and drop it in. All right, now let's add another spawn operator in the event four here beneath the other one. Go ahead and switch output side. Then we could actually just make a copy of this event, paste it in here, and select the shape operator and then change the reference node to the empty shell casing. And then connect this to the new spawn operator. And then go back into the spawn operator and enable delete parent. But I probably will go ahead and add another speed operator into the empty link event and then change the mode to add to velocity and increase the magnitude to two, change the direction to particle Z and then maybe add a little noise. And that'll just lift those particles up some, help separate them from the shell casing. I'll go ahead and select some of these objects here, hide those. Now this is going to be too fast for this gun. It'd probably take about 500 frames to shoot all 120 rounds. But if you're getting any separation in your binds, just select tie flow, open the settings rollout, and increase the time step. So let's say a half frame, and that'll solve that problem. That's pretty much it. There's several directions you could go with this using this basic setup, and I'd be interested in seeing some of the things you could come up with. I have a couple more videos I'll probably post very similar in nature. But hey, I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch. If you're having any issues or if you're not getting the correct results, please leave me a comment. If you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. I would really appreciate that. But until next time, I hope you have a great day and take care. Thanks again.